Here I want to show you how to allow only alphanumeric characters to be entered into a cell in Excel. Specifically, or basically, just only letters and numbers. Nothing else. So here we've got a test. We've got letters, numbers, and then a dash in there. So this reads false. Remove it, and it reads true. So right here, and you can see part of the formula up here, is what we need in order to make this work. We're going to combine this really huge and complicated formula along with data validation to make sure that this cell can either be blank, contain either letters, numbers, letters and numbers, but nothing else. So let's go ahead and get started, make these guys visible. Now don't freak out when you see this. <laughs> it's not the end of the world, but it is going to be quite confusing. So the best thing might be just to download the workbook, but I'm going to go through every single little piece. And you don't have to understand exactly how everything works in order to use this for your case. So before we begin, note that this output's true or false. And that's what we need for data validation to work. We need a formula that outputs true Yes, the person can input that stuff, or false, no, the person cannot input that stuff. So we double click, let's select everything, copy it. Now we're going to apply data validation to cell A1. And note, it is a good idea to build your formulas in the spreadsheet itself because it includes all the error checking and so on. If you apply it during data validation or in the data validation window, then you're almost certainly going to run into errors. So copy it, select the cell, go to the Data tab, Data Validation, or Alt-DL for the keyboard shortcut. Settings tab, Allow, Custom, Formula, and paste the formula in there. Now make sure that it already references the cell that you've selected before you put it in here, or you may run into trouble, or it just may be a little bit more difficult to adjust everything while it's in here. Then hit OK. Now I can delete this, hit enter, text, no problem, numbers, just like before. But as soon as we try and put something else in there, error, retry, error, and so on. So that's really the easy part, and you may already know that from previous tutorials. But what we want to do here now is teach you how to build this. So what I did is I put the big long formula right here, cell A3. Then I broke it down to its next step in A4, A5, A6, and A7. So what I want to do is to start here in A7. And you'll notice over here between two quotation marks, you've got 0 through 9 and A through Z. This goes all the way up through until the big one up here. Now, this is where you input what you want to be able to be entered into the cell. So let's say you only want the numbers 1, 2, 3. Well, put the numbers 1, 2, 3 in here, but take out all the rest. Or you only want a certain number of letters. Do the same thing. Only input the letters that you want to be able to be input. Now, if you're only doing letters or only doing numbers, you can probably do that through the regular data validation features, but if you want a combination of those or a combination of letters, numbers, symbols, and so on, then just input that here. Basically, once you got the formula, it's pretty easy to adjust. So with this part of the formula right here, what we're going to be doing, or what the formula does, is to pull in the data. In this case, I have cell A2, but let's just pretend it's cell A1. So it's going to pull in the data ASDF123, it's going to figure out how long it is. Then it's going to pop that in right here. So it uses the len function to calculate the length. Then what we're going to be doing is using the indirect function to input one colon and the length, so however many characters are in that cell, it's going to input that directly into the row function. So all the indirect function does is it allows you to have formulas and functions within it that make some sort of output 
that the indirect function will then directly put into another function. So it's not going to perform calculations on 1 colon, what will end up being 7. That's very important. So that's why the indirect function is there, because it transfers 1 colon 7 to the row function. The row function, due to kind of one of the neat little things that it does, will then put 1 colon 7 into an array, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then the mid function is going to use that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to split up the contents of the cell. And it's going to split it up individually, so only one character length. The mid cell allows you to extract text or characters from within other text or characters in the cell. So the mid function is what splits it up into its individual characters. In this case, a, comma, s, comma, d, comma, f, comma, 1, comma, 2, comma, 3. Then the search function is going to use that, which has just been split up, and it's going to see if it can find it within this list. So can it find a or s or d or f or 1 or 2 or 3? If it can, it's going to return the location of that letter or number within this list here. Therefore, we're going to get a number. So it counts from left to right. We get a bunch of numbers, in this case, seven numbers. And now we move on to the next one. So we're kind of using a few little tricky or clever ways to go about this. The search function has just given us the number locations for all these characters. Now, if a character is not in this list, that's where we get an error. And that's very important for the next function. In cell A6, everything is the same except for now we have the sum product function. Now the sum product function is a mathematical function. You don't really need to know anything else about it except for that it needs numbers to be input into it. It cannot have errors going into it if you want it to spit out the correct answer. So remember that the search would return the number location of the characters here but if it couldn't find it, it would return an error for that character. So the sum product, if it gets an error, the result of that function is going to be an error. If everything in here is a number, which means it was found within the list, then it returns a number itself. Now that takes us to A5, which is the isError function. That's very simple. It goes on the outside of the sum product function. Everything else remains the same. And the is error is simply going to return either true or false. So if the sum product function returned an error, the is error function returns true. If it did not return an error, it returns false. Now we go to A4. We have simply an if function around the is error function. So if the is error returns true, which means that there is an error, which means there is a character that shouldn't be there, then we output false. If the isError function returns false, which means there is no error, it's going to output true. Now you may not need to actually have an if function around the isError function. The reason it's here is for versatility. So you can use this formula and change it as you like. So you could output something other than false or true. You don't have to use this with data validation. And that's just going to make it a little bit easier if you take this and try and work with it. Now we go to cell A3. This is simply one last if statement. So I want to make sure that if the cell that we're checking is empty, that there is no problem there. So in this case, remember, this one has to do with A2. If A2 is empty, I'll put true. And remember, we have to output true or false because we're using it in data validation. So if data validation gets a value of true, everything's OK. So if the cell is empty, Everything's OK. Then we've got everything else below. That runs if cell A2 is not empty. Now, like I said, this is confusing. If you aren't very well versed in formulas and functions, or even if you're just not familiar with the ones that are used here, you may not quite understand how all this is working. And that's OK. In fact, you could just take what I said at the very beginning of the tutorial and run with that. Copy this formula down, write it down, and then just change 
the list right here at the end. Or keep the list at the end, depending on your needs. Now, one last thing I'm going to do, and this might help you visualize everything, is to sort of run through how the formula actually works. So I want to select the cell B1, go to the Formulas tab, then Evaluate Formula. So now we're going to see Excel do everything that I just explained. Pretty much the only difference here is that we're going to start in cell A3, check that first if statement, then bump down to cell A7 and start from the middle. Once we are in the Evaluate window, you can go ahead and click the Evaluate button. But first, notice which area up here is underlined. So we have A1. That means that when we click Evaluate, this will run through. That means Excel is going to begin the calculation, and you can see how it does everything. So it's going to pull in the value for A1, Evaluate, ASDF123. Now it's going to check if that equals nothing, Evaluate. The result of that is false. That means that we now have to start processing everything from the false argument, which is everything down here from A4 on. The next thing underlined is the A1 within the mid function. Just pulls in ASDF123. Then we go down to A1 down here. It's going to pull in the same thing. ASDF123. Now the len function is going to count out that. How long is it? How many characters? We get a 7. Now with the indirect here, this ampersand is going to combine 1 colon with the 7. And indirect is going to spit that out to the row function. So it's not going to change anything else. It's going to spit out 1 colon 7. Now put dollar signs on it, but that doesn't really matter. Now row is going to be evaluated. This is where we start to get out the array. So it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. See the curly braces, then 1, colon, semicolon 2, semicolon 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now the mid function will run. And what it's going to do is to get out each letter individually. That's really just going to be the goal. So the mid function has popped out ASDF123. That allows it to be searched against this list here using the search function. Now the search function has returned each character's position within the list of allowable characters. 11, 29, 14, and so on. Now it's going to run its magic here. It returns 79, so that is not an error is error will return false. Therefore, the if function here will return true. Therefore, the first if function will return true. Now, if I do that, I'll just run through this one real quick. Let's take that off, actually. It shouldn't be there. Dash. Ah, Got to take off the data validation first. input a dash. Now let's go ahead, run through it. Formulas, evaluate formula. I'll do this one real quick. So it's going to pull in everything. Now we get to the search. ASDF, there we've got our dash, is not contained in our list. Evaluate that. And we get a value error for it. So when the sum product works or runs, it's not going to be able to do everything it's supposed to. So it returns an error as well, which pops that error into the is error function, which returns then true because it found an error, and this if statement returns false, and the first if statement therefore returns false. So that was quite a long tutorial and quite a long and thorough explanation of how this works. But like I mentioned in the very beginning, if you're terribly confused about this or you just don't understand why one thing works the way it does, really don't stress over it too much. Go for this function or formula here in cell A3, 
Just change the list here as you need, or change the cell references to point to the correct cell in your worksheet. We've got a cell reference here, A2, another one here, and another one here. So just three cell references is all you have to change. And if you want to add or subtract anything from the list here, you can do so. Notice that it is not case sensitive. And also, I will be using this tutorial as sort of a base upon which to build other tutorials. So I won't ever cover this formula as in depth as I have in this tutorial. And remember that in order to get a little error message, if someone inputs something they aren't supposed to here, we use data validation. Select the cell, hit Alt DL, or go to the data tab, data validation. Then under allow, go to custom, and paste that long formula in there. And that's all you have to do to allow only alphanumeric characters to be entered into a cell in Excel.